What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I'm Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, I am finally in the new 2023 Honda Civic Sedan, courtesy of Apple Honda of Hanover in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because this is a very fuel efficient vehicle. Be a great commuter car, of course. It has a very legendary name. And I happen to like the exterior design. Now, I think the redesign of these things were absolutely amazing. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2023 Civic. First one being the LX, starting at $23,750. Sport for $25,350. EX for $26,200. And lastly, the Touring for $30,350. But as you can imagine, with all of those trim levels, there are a couple different engine configurations as well. So that first engine configuration is going to belong to the LX and Sport trim levels. And by the way, we have the Sport trim level level today but powering that one is a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 158 horsepower at 6500 rpm 138 pound feet of torque coming in at 4200 rpm that power being sent to the front wheels through a continuously variable transmission with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit by the way the paddle shifters they only come with the sports from level that we have today so that should be fun but anyway zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 9.2 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 30 one in the city 40 on the highway for the lx 30 in the city 37 then on the highway for the sport taking regular unleaded fuel but so then there is that other engine configuration of course belonging to the ex and the touring trim levels that one is powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder 180 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 177 pound feet of torque coming in at 1700 rpm power being sent to the front wheels through a cvt yet again zero to 60 time for that one 7.5 seconds so substantially quicker there but mpg numbers coming in at 33 in the city 42 on the highway for the ex 31 city 38 then on the highway for the touring again taking regular unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the Civic, wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's actually a little toggle switch located directly behind the shifter, and it makes a little noise when you change the drive modes, apparently. But anyways, those drive modes will include Econ, Normal, and Sport, adjusting things like the shift points, throttle response, steering sensitivity, and actually the air conditioning system as well. I remember that in my old Civic, so when you press the Econ button, you got the AC on on a hot day, it tailors back that air conditioning, so if you can deal with with a little less air conditioning, you can get actually a substantial bit more miles per gallon. I noticed that in my old Civic. But anyways, now that I've got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and put the paddle shifters here to the test first. Keep in mind, this is a CVT, so it's not technically shifting through any gears. It's kind of simulated shifting, but they can still be fun in theory. So let's go ahead and give them a shot and let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, we're in sport driving mode. I just switched that up. First gear, let's see if it shifts for me. It's not. Nice. Let's go. Ah. I mean, you can kind of still tell it's the CVT. I'm going to be honest with the paddle shifters, but that was kind of fun. I didn't mind that. But I will say the one thing I did like about the paddle shifters is when you're in sport driving mode and you're shifting, it actually doesn't shift for you. So a lot of transmissions will do that if you don't hit anything, I guess to try to save the engine or something. But with this, it didn't. So I like having full control. Again, though, keep in mind, it's a CVT. But anyways, now let's get back full control to the Civic. Let's find another straightaway here. Let's put the acceleration here to the test with the Civic having full control. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, let's kick it. Three, two, one, rolling start. Let's go. <laughs> All right, not the quickest thing in the world, but that's not what this particular engine configuration is built for. This one is built for reliability. I'm just gonna tell you that straight off the bat. This is the multi-port injected engine, so it is gonna be more reliable than the turbocharged direct injected engine that uh, the EX and the touring trim level comes with. So really, your choice is between, do you want reliability or do you want a substantial bit more acceleration? Honestly, typically what I say is it's something that you get used to. It doesn't matter what vehicle you're driving with the exception of maybe the Mirage. You will get used to an acceleration even if it's not the quickest one out there. If you favor reliability, 
reality, the LX or the Sport might be the one to go with, but again, not the quickest thing in the world. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.1 inch ventilated front disc. In the back, 10.2 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 year stopping distance goes, that comes in at 122 feet. As far as braking feel goes, it has been 100% perfectly fine. Definitely on the firmer side of things. So 122 feet is a very respectable number. It's not sports sedan good, but it's definitely not a bad number either. So typically with SUVs, you see 130s. Typically in sports sedans, you see in the low or one teen so 122 feet that's 100% on point for this thing but anyways then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-leg rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes I will say you tend to feel a little bit more of the road in cars in compact cars like the Civic and that's definitely the case here especially with our larger wheel setup in our sport trim level that we have here today so you can feel a decent amount of the road and again it's probably something you'll get used to as far as steering feel goes it is a substantial difference dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in i'm leaving it in sport driving mode right now just because i love the steering feel in this sport driving mode that we have it in right now but let me go ahead and take it out just for a little experiment here put it back to normal and it does instantly loosen up honestly it's still not that bad in normal driving mode though but i just prefer the slightly heavier steering feel in the sport i will say that as far as cabin noise goes you do get a little bit of road noise as you would expect in a compact car but honestly it's not something that would bother me so no issue there and take a look at visibility I see 100% perfectly fine out the back so when it comes to rear visibility through my rear view mirror definitely no issues there but I did want to also mention if you were to go with the touring trim level you will also get rain sensing windshield wipers as well so whenever the Civic detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. it's just like automatic headlights it's just one less thing you got to worry about there so that's pretty darn convenient as well but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Honda Civic Sedan. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Honda Civic Sedan finished in Sonic Gray. In case you were curious of our exterior color name, I love this color. It actually looks really good. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Civic is actually made. Taking a look at the VIN. First character is the number two, indicating that the new 2023 Honda Civic is built and assembled in Canada. That's right, eh? So anyways, let's go ahead and start up front. LED headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. Get the automatic feature with that as well, of course, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there but also automatic high beams coming stated across the board. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when the vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams. So definitely a very convenient feature there as well. If you wanted LED fog lights down below, go with the touring trim level. That is how you're going to go ahead and get that. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I loved the redesign of the Civic when it first came out. It's got a lower hood line, much better appearance than the previous generation in my personal opinion. And I think these things are selling just fine because of it. So love the front end of this one. But now having said that, let's go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the Civic, black window surrounds do come standard. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard unless you go with the Sport and then you get gloss black side mirrors like you guys are looking at. Heated side mirrors are gonna come with the EX, LED integrated turn signal send coming with the touring trim level. Then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 16 inch steel wheels with covers coming with the LX, 18 inch gloss black alloys for the Sport. That of course is what you guys are looking at right now. 17 inch alloys then for the EX and lastly 18 inch alloys with shark gray inserts coming with the touring But that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna. And one thing, they don't have a spoiler, but it kind of looks like it's almost like an integrated spoiler into the back end of this one. I don't know, I like the look of it though. It kind of doesn't even need a spoiler just because it looks pretty darn good. But I like the sport badging back there, of course, as well. LED tail lights do come standard on the Civic Sedan, so added illumination at night. That is not always the case in the compact segment, so I wanted to mention that. But down below, of course, you will find a single exhaust outlet, and if you were to go with the Sport that we have today, it will be finished in a chrome exhaust tip, which looks dang good back there. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All 
Okay, it's open now since we are around to the back of the Civic. When it comes to opening that rear trunk, there is a button on the key fob. There is also though a button on the trunk itself, a little rubberized button. Both ways are of course gonna open that up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.8 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There is some cargo lighting back there. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a spare tire as opposed to the fix of flat, which I personally prefer, as I always say. But then make our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 37.4 inches. For reference, I am even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. If you wanted dual rear USB charging ports for the rear passengers, go with the touring trim level. If you wanted a rear center armrest for the rear passengers, go with the EX or the touring trim level. And there is no rear ventilation, unfortunately. But then make our way up to the front seats. Cloth seating is going to come with the LX, Sport, and EX trim levels. Leather seating coming with the touring trim level only. Manually adjustable front seats are going to come standard for all trim levels but the touring. Of course, touring giving you an eight way power adjustable driver seat and actually a four-way power adjustable passenger seat with that touring as well. Heated front seats then coming with the EX and touring trim levels but although they're cloth seats and although they're manually adjustable in our sport trim level that is one thing I really like about this one the second I sat in it the seats are plenty comfortable without a doubt and the bolsters on the left and the right it definitely holds you in place quite well so Big fan of the seating, believe it or not, in the Civic. But then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. And then if you were to go with that sport trim level and up, it will be leather wrapped as well. But so then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key. You got your nice Honda logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, lock, unlock that circular button that says hold. That is gonna be your remote start, which comes on the sport trim level and up. And of course the button to pop the rear trunk, but it is all keyless entry with the push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that red and black engine start button located kind of just by the driver's right knee there. And so once started up, when it comes to the gauges, you got your tachometer on your left, speedometer is on your right. There are some steering wheel mounted controls you can use to kind of cycle between everything up there. But of course it tells you your drive modes, it gives you your outside temperature. There's a nice digital speedometer as well. How many miles you have left until you hit empty. We got 325 left right now and uh, pretty much everything you could possibly want up there. And of course, the gauges do change slightly depending upon the drive mode that you put it in. I don't wanna to forget to mention that. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. There is a power moonroof for the EX and touring trim levels, and that is why our Sport doesn't have it today. Sunglass holder coming with the touring trim level only. Home link controls for the touring trim level only as well. Automatic climate control though, coming for all trim levels across the board. I love that essentially what that is, is you can just set a temperature, it's gonna automatically hit that, so it's gonna do the AC or the heat, whatever you need to hit that temperature. Dual zone climate control though, coming with the EX and the touring. Auto dimming rear view mirror for the touring trim level only. You will get sport pedals. I like these aluminum sport pedals down there for the sport trim level only. And overall, I like the honeycomb design that is found uh, where the air vents are. I think that's pretty darn cool. I know the Integra copied that as well. So I love that design element. Having said that, there is some hard plastic found on the doors. They probably could have swapped that out, at least with an, a nice design rather than just a matte black plastic. Just the front of the shifter, you got a little bit of rubberized storage. You got a 12 volt power outlet USB charging port. To the right of the shifter, you do have dual cup holders with a very nice design. And yes, it's plastic, but I love the design on this. They probably should have brought that onto the doors because that looks dang good. Electromechanical parking brake, of course, and within the center armrest, actually a decent amount of storage within the center armrest. More storage than the Corolla, I can tell you guys that. So not too bad in the Civic. I mean, there are some hard plastics, but it's definitely doable. I have no issues there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display here. Seven inch color touchscreen display is going to come on the LX Sport and EX trim levels. But if you go with that touring, you're gonna get a nine inch color touchscreen display. Either way, getting Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system is going to come with the touring trim level only and of course you can adjust your radio information up there as well so when it comes to the sound systems there's three of them believe it or not four speakers and 160 watts are going to come with the lx for our sport trim level as well as the ex you're going to get an eight speaker sound system with 180 watts and then for the touring you're going to get a 12 speaker bose sound system so Having now got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out our eight speaker sound system that we have in our sport trim level here today. All right, so let's 
So when it comes to that eight speaker sound system, I will say the bass surprised me. More bass than I expected 100% in the Civic sedan. Clarity, not the best. But that's to be expected in an eight speaker sound system with only 180 watts, but the bass was pretty darn good. If you wanted a better sound system, that's what the Bose sound system is there for if you wanted to jump up to the touring, but that'll get by with that one. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Civic in reverse, of course, you will find a rear view camera with a couple different angles actually as well, which is always, it's going to lead us into safety. So first, let me start with the best part. IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest rating given by IIHS. That pretty much says it all about the safety right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. That doesn't always come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard Honda Sensing. And so what that's gonna include is collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, traffic jam assist, traffic sign recognition, and a driver attention monitoring system as well. If you wanted even more safety, go with the Touring, because the Touring is gonna add to that front and rear parking sensors, low speed braking control, and a blind spot information system as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Civic, Great styling. That's the first thing you notice when you when you see the Civic basically the, the redesign is absolutely amazing They did really go with that excellent safety. It does not get any better than an IIHS top safety pick plus good fuel economy with this one as well You definitely can't argue that I would personally get the sport trim level the one we are in today because It is a naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine and so therefore it is going to be the most Reliable engine and you are probably going to easily go over 200,000 miles in it as I have done in my previous Civics that I have owned I think the the one I had the longest was a 230,000 before I traded it in so these things will definitely go a long Long distance when it's paired up with a naturally aspirated four-cylinder I put it th I'll put it that way as far as room for improvement goes I got two things for you the plastic on the doors the matte black plastic I really don't like that just add a design to it do something with it not a big fan and since this is a Civic it's kind of catering to a younger generation I think ambient lighting will be a really sweet thing to put in this maybe on the touring trim level or even better just add it as an option for all trim levels and maybe it is an option maybe I missed it but I think ambient lighting would look dang good in this thing but anyways let me know what you guys think of the 2023 Civic sedan in the comments section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video Stay gold.